<laughs> all right. So this week we're joined by Lauren Cox from Lockdown Bears. Pretty much all the social media platforms at Lockdown Bears. The main topic here, I think, that really kind of clouds the Bears fan base is the quarterback conversation. This thing has really kind of turned into a civil war, especially on the internet. It's it's amazing. I get comments all the time that say, the choice is so obvious. And I'm like, okay. You know, we do have different scenarios that could play out here. Whether we keep fields, whether we get a young new quarterback, whether we go out and try and get some type of veteran, um, whatever Ryan Poles may think is the right way to go is what's going to happen. But do you have a preference and have the bears given any hints to what they think they will need from that position moving forward? Yeah, I, I agree with you hundred percent that anybody who thinks it's clearly and obviously one way is definitively better than the other, I think is oversimplifying it or not, or, or not open-minded enough that both possibilities have merit in a lot of ways that's a good problem to have either you believe in fields and that's great and he can develop and step into a bigger thing or you really believe in a rookie quarterback and that you think that player could come in and be the next great quarterback and like either way ideally then you're getting a good quarterback like whether it's fields or the other one that you believe one way or the other like you should have two good choices not like you know you're trying to decide between you know terrible quarterbacks in this process so to me, from the beginning, it's like, all right, it's a good place to be where it's like, if you didn't have the number one overall pick, you'd probably just be rolling with fields anyway and not having the same conversation. I, I think personally, I'm, I'm kind of at the point now where I don't think it's an obvious choice, but I do lean rookie quarterback there. Like to me, I would like to keep Justin Fields and draft the rookie quarterback and try and do both. Find a way to make it work in the locker room. And it doesn't even necessarily have to be the number one overall pick for the quarterback, but certainly draft one in the first round, early in the first round and set it up so that young quarterback is your quarterback of the future and that clearly you're saying publicly Justin Fields is not our long-term quarterback of the future and hope that you have a head coach either the current one or a new one that is strong and stable enough to withstand that in the locker room and, and we have seen locker rooms be able to get through that in the past but maybe not a locker room with as much public support behind Justin Fields I mean it's hard to it's hard to compare apples and apples to, to previous circumstances but I still think give me as many shots at a good quarterback as possible instead of hamstringing me into just one or the other. Why not both and see if either one turns out to be good. Me and Paulie always go over the the, mo the model and the mold that people are saying that field is going to follow, right? So last year was Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts, right? This year now, I'm in my opinion, like if you want to keep fields, you got to try to do some sort of version of the Miami Dolphins model, right? And if you're blowing it up, now you're trying to copy the Texans, right? Go high early really get like a good young offensive staff in there. D'Amico Ryan's defensive, but either way, and then you're trying to rebuild. So it's like a version of a model that you've seen before, right? But when you talk about Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts, people don't mention the fact that they sat for an entire full year. You talk about Justin Fields has to make the third year jump. Well, the guy also didn't get a year of like no scrutiny, no pressure, not getting his brains bashed in and then like learning a system that was consistent. Oh, and also that coach left the first year also. So he started over year two. And then additionally, whether or not you want to look at it this way with the NFL, because going even back into last year, how many times the Bears lost the game in the last second or the last play? Same with this year. A lot of this is luck, right? Like you have the first overall pick again. Yes, because Carolina is bad, but also because you're like super lucky. Because if Carolina wins one or two more games this year, and you have now the ninth pick of your own, and you have, let's say, the sixth pick. What are we talking about? Are we talking about what two guys to put around fields to make him better? Or are we saying, can we package six and nine to go get one? Because I don't think that that's the like narrative that you'd be hearing right now. Because if it was a little bit different, you would be talking so differently. You would have such different ideas. But because you've lucked into this situation, now it's obvious. If you get rid of fields, I don't want another carousel of quarterback. Because I, I like what you said, Lauren. I'd like to get an early pick at quarterback. and then you know, have him sit for a little bit, but you can't do that with 1-1. One, one. You can't even do it with like 1-2 or 1-3. I don't want a 1-1 one, one pick at quarterback again with a coach that's stuck around and then a guy who didn't get handpicked again, and then you have the same narrative. The first two choices that we keep talking about and hearing about, I don't think are actually going to work because they've been proven not to work. You just fire everyone, bring in a new coach and a new and a first overall rookie quarterback, and it's just going to work. And then you keep the old guy and it's just all of a sudden year four developmentally, it's going to work. I don't know. I think you have to find the nuanced choice here. And I think Ryan Poles is patient and smart enough to do it. 
but I don't think either of these two obvious choices are actually the right choice. I really don't. You don't hear this very often because it it's, hasn't been said very often. Um, Matt Nagy was right. He was right to sit fields early on. And the problem is when you're in that last year, you wind up getting desperate to keep your job. So fields went in because Andy Dalton got hurt, right? So he went in due to necessity from injury. However, the longer that season goes, the more you need to do something to show that you are worthy of staying here, you know, for the next year or so. And that's usually when those quarterbacks wind up getting tossed in anyway. And it's kind of funny because here we are, our rivals, the Packers have literally shown us the path that has succeeded twice now. Well, I mean, Jordan Love first year, still got more time to go. I've seen guys work out in their first year and still bomb. However, it's on that trajectory. It's on the trajectory that he is working out. I really don't want this to feel like the last year of Matt Nagy where you have this new draft pick that's just sitting there waiting to go. I would rather do the opposite. I, I think I would rather get a new coach in here to try and fix fields or get more out of them while having another quarterback from the draft early in the draft or first round quarterback in, in the back waiting and, you know, getting better and getting ready to start. This idea of, of drafting and, and sitting a quarterback and, and trying to give that time, like, yeah, like, I agree. Like most of the time you don't see a, a quarterback drafted one, one or one, two, or, you know, sitting on the benches rookie season, because of course you draft him that early because you think he can be the guy, but the vast majority, if not every time we've seen that in the last handful of seasons, the teams drafting one, one and one, two are, are picking their because they're really bad football teams. Like sure. We saw the Panthers trade up. We've seen teams trade up in that spot, but like the teams that are drafting up that high end up being, really bad football teams. And so they don't have a good or, you know, really sustainable alternative at quarterback for that spot. And so they have to roll those guys. But the exception there is kind of Trey Lance with the 49ers a couple years ago. They traded up to three. It's not one or two, but still top three. And and sat him for not the entire rookie season. They ended up getting him out there. But the plan was not to get him out there early because they either felt good enough about Garoppolo, felt like they could still compete with Garoppolo, and also train and develop the better thing behind him. And certainly Trey Lance is not the outcome you want for the bears but to me that feels like the way to try and go about it is say listen like we totally believe in drake may caleb williams or whoever you're picking at the quarterback spot and maybe it doesn't even have to be at one you know maybe you could trade down to three and still take Jaden daniels or you know whatever quarterback you like from this class but like i i think if you're a good enough team with a good enough quarterback option ahead of them it's easier to get away with all right we can sit this highly drafted rookie and still believe in him while still going with a veteran quarterback kind of, you could argue week one, Caleb Williams might not be the better NFL quarterback than Justin Fields. So you could justifiably say we are starting fields until we feel Caleb Williams is the better guy and treat it like a Alex Smith, Patrick Mahomes type of situation where maybe it's only a full seasons or whatever it ends up looking like. But as soon as Caleb's ready to go, everybody loved Alex Smith in that locker room. But there was an understanding that like, yeah, this Patrick Mahomes guy has the higher ceiling and is the better quarterback. I know it's not apples to apples with fields, but it feels like we have seen that formula play out on a couple of different teams and they've been able to find ways to manage those personalities and those dynamics, just not exactly this exact situation. It's something we haven't seen before really in Chicago. No. And the teams that you're mentioning though, and me and Paulie have mentioned this a lot about the bears and what the way they're doing things right now, they haven't earned that right. Bill Belichick does that and he can do it because he's earned that right. Andy Reed can draft a quarterback at, 10, I believe. Andy Reid's earned that right to sit Patrick Mahomes and then play Alex Smith. And if anybody scrutinizes, he goes, I'm Andy Reid. I've got this. We're, we're good. The Niners have a built-in system of production of like, nobody even questioned the move up to Trey Lance. Everybody was like, damn, did they just sneak in at three and get the best quarterback? Because they're the Niners. And I think the Bears should do that. But can they do that without it looking controversial? It's going to be the unpopular opinion because, again, we keep talking about the Civil War. It's cut and dry. Bears total, if you don't move around in the draft, if you include Ian Cunningham compensation, the Bears will have seven total picks this year. A first, a first, a third, a third, four, five, six. Or I believe four, five, seven. That's so like now you're bringing in Caleb Williams, a first overall pick. You're keeping fields. You're not getting compensation to get a second round player that draft. Now you're hoping Fields works out. You can trade him for something later. It's such an unpopular opinion, and it's such a controversial decision. It could be the right one, probably is the right one. I think you're on the right path there. It, it speaks to the importance of 
having the right head coach and an offensive coordinator and having the right staff in place. And the, there's a separate conversation here. It's like, okay, like there's, there's what the bears should do at quarterback, like what's best for their long-term future quarterback. And also like, if Matt Eberflus is entering a lame duck year, is that the best time to draft a quarterback? Mm-hmm.